Hey, welcome back. All right, let's talk about your assignment. You are going to be delivering a three to five minute informative speech based on an international current event. Now, let's go ahead and break this down, okay? It's between three and five minutes. So the speech as a whole, what you want to aim for is four minutes. And we'll talk about that later on. Remember, we're not going to rush this. We're going to take our time putting this together and delivering it to make sure you have as polished a speech as possible. Okay, it's going to be an informative speech. Now, what that means is, is that what your goal is, is to inform us, to educate us, to inform and or educate us about something we may not have known before. That's the goal of an informative speech, to inform and or educate. All right. So, if you're looking to persuade us, don't do it. I've got a persuasive speech assignment that's coming up later on in the semester. All right. So the one thing I don't want in this speech is your opinion. I don't care. I don't want you to say this is what I think. This is what we should do. Whatever. No. Your opinion is out. An informative speech is to inform and or educate. No opinion. No influencing. No persuasion. All right. International current event. Now, what that means is we want to talk about something that's happened this year or happens on an annual basis. International. What that means is, is that your speech topic can have absolutely positively nothing whatsoever to do with the good old USA. Okay? No USA. All right? The United Nations recognizes approximately 192 sovereign nations. Take away one, that leaves 191. And there's a lot of stuff going on out there, and I want you to go ahead and do a speech about it. Now, you're going to have to have at least three sources, all right, as the research for your speech. Anything, okay? Books, newspapers, magazines, that's fine. But I tell you what, if everything is web-based, that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, I've now come to the conclusion, especially since 1995, when the Internet pretty much went mainstream, uh, it's just easiest. It's the easiest way to do if all your sources are web sources. I have no problem with that. Uh, almost any topic, you can just punch it into Google. And if you get 1.2 million matches, hell, I just want three. All right. Um, now, I say an annual event, something that happens yearly or something that's in the happen last year. Uh, let, let me just be very specific about this or clarify for, this for you. If there's a news item out there you want to talk about, okay, it could be a disaster. It could be something lively, all right? Um, yeah, something that's happened within the last year, you can talk about that. But to make it a little easier for some of you, what you can also do is you can talk about an annual festival or celebration that happens. All right. Uh, one of the things that I have really loved about this assignment is when I go ahead and I kind of twist that part of the uh, assignment is when you can now you know do an annual event, like an annual festival or celebration. Uh, I'm surprised at some of the things that I've never heard of that students will talk about. For example, there was um, going way back to 2005. I had a, it was the summer session, and I had a young lady who was vice president of the Latin American Student Association of Bergen, and she talked about this annual festival of flowers in Medellin, from where she's from in Colombia. I'd never heard of this festival before, yet before her speech was done, I was convinced that this was a much better celebration than what we do every New Year's Day out in Pasadena, California with the Tournament of Roses Parade. It was amazing, the Festival of Flowers in Medellin. Um, I've had people talk about, um, oh God, a lot of the countries where uh, in Eastern Europe where they celebrate the coming of the spring. And they'll have, whether it's in Albania or some other countries, where they have these big celebrations. And then, of course, we, you can talk about the biggest celebration on the planet and that of course every late september into october in munich germany yes we're talking about oktoberfest well you'll get about 8.2 million people comes out uh, and they go crazy uh, so you could talk about these also now one of the things i will say is a lot of these annual festivals and celebrations did not occur in 2020 
So you can either talk about the ones that happened in 2019 or the ones that hopefully are the planning that are coming up for them soon. Um, it's a crazy time right now with COVID. So um, this assignment has really kind of like got thrown for a loop because of that. But that's all right. That's all right because there's so much information about these. I mean, trust me, there's a lot of information from the last 2019. Actually, I think in 2020, they did do the celebration of Carnival in Rio down in, uh, in Brazil. Um, I think it was right before uh, all the lockdowns in South America happened for COVID. So I think they were able to get that in in 2020. So and, so, and as you can probably recognize now, is you don't have to be native to the country you're talking about. I mean, that does help, though. Uh, for many of you, if you're, you're from another country and, you know, English is not your first language, you're a little nervous. You know what? You do a celebration from your country that nobody's ever heard of. Or even if it's a similar celebration or a similar festival that we have here in America, whether it's like Christmas or Easter, but it's celebrated differently in your home country. Yeah, go ahead. Talk about that. But you don't have to be native. I mean, there's a, a lot of people who are not Spanish or from Spain who talk about the world's biggest food fight. And that, of course, comes every August in Buñol, Spain, when they have La Tomatina. And that's when, for an hour, people just throw tomatoes at one another. It's a fantastic event. Um, so these are the kind of things you can do. Now, I've attached a couple of different things to your email today with my video. Number one is a directional on how to put together your speeches. Now, you're going to have to have a full content outline. All right. Now, what this does is shows me how well you research and prepare for the speech. And it's going to be your speech word for word. Just remember, and I said this the last video, okay, especially, hopefully you're listening. Some of those people, I actually had a student admit to me the other day that they just skimmed through the videos. Not a good move when I'm giving directions for an assignment. Uh, but, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, my goodness. Um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, so I don't want your speech memorized, but I at least need to have that full content outline word for word. Uh, and then when you deliver your speech, uh, it's always good to have the outline down in front of you. Uh, so this gives you an idea of how to put that out. Now, we're going to talk about that on... Tuesday morning. We're going to talk about the part, uh, the uh, attachment I've given you, the part that talks about putting your speech into an outline. We're going to talk about that on Tuesday. Now, the beginning part of the attachment that I've given you, that's what I need by Monday night at eight o'clock. And what that is, is a, spe a specific purpose statement. As you can see, okay, your specific purpose statement not only tells me the topic of your speech, but the goal that you look to accomplish. Now, for an informative speech, it's going to be worded one of two ways. After listening to my speech, my audience will know, or after listening to my speech, my audience will understand. Okay? Um, and what I've also given you is I've given you three sample outlines. I have dozens and dozens of outlines from students in the past going all the way back to 2000 up until this most recent uh, spring semester last year. Uh, I haven't really gathered any from uh, since we started going full online, but that's okay because they've been some really good ones. Um, but I wanted to give you some of these. One of them from Cecilia goes back to November of 2005. Now, the reason why I, I put that one in there is she took full advantage when I talked about twisting the assignment. I mean, it was international current event. Cecilia was 26 years old from Poland. And COM 100 was her first ever mainstream class. She had just finished our American language program. So, of course, she was very nervous about giving a speech in English. Well, I said, listen, take the little twist. So she grew up near this city called Zakopane in Poland, where they had this annual jazz music festival. Well, she did her speech about it. Outstanding speech. It is now one you still learn from 16 years later. All right, that's how good it was. Um, one of the others, I have Ashley's speech, which was very good. But I also want to point to Morell's. Morell delivered her speech right before we went to spring break uh, in 2020. So I heard her speech in class. She delivered an excellent speech. And then, of course, we went on spring break and never went back. Uh, but Morell's is one of the best speeches I've had 
in the last five years. So you look at the structure, you look at how she delivered it, how she cites her sources. And again, we're not going to talk about that yet. All I need from you guys by Monday night, 8 o'clock, and this is a one of your 15-point assignments, I just need you to send me a specific purpose statement. After listening to my speech, my audience will know, or after listening to my speech, my audience will understand, and then whatever your topic is. All right? So take a look at the samples. Get an idea of what you might want to do. Again, um, a lot of annual celebrations, annual festivals. It can also be a hard news item, something that's happened over the last year. All right? But remember, and I can't say this enough, no USA. Nothing to do with your speech. And also, you're not here to influence. You're not here to persuade. You're only here to inform and educate. So keep your opinion out of this speech. All right? So I look forward to your specific purpose statements, and we'll see you on Tuesday morning. Uh, good luck with Friday morning. It's going to be a little crazy.